Hong Xia is uh, completing her PhD, supervised uh, by Professor Gang Li from Northeastern University in China, and Professor Matei Radlescu from the University of Ottawa in Canada. She received her master's degree under the supervision of Professor Gang Li, and her bachelor's degree at Jiang, Jiangxi University of Science and Technology in China. During her PhD, she spent two years and seven months at the University of Ottawa, conducting her doctoral research through a joint training program sponsored by the China Scholarship Council and by Professor Radlescu. Hong Xia's research, research is done from the perspective of using experiments and numerical modeling and theoretical analysis. Uh, she'll be presenting her research on the dynamics of cellular flame deformation after head-on interactions with shock waves and their subsequent de detonation to deflagration transition in narrow channels. Um, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Hong Xia, and welcome to my talk. Uh, first, I would like to thank Xiao Cheng, Sham, and uh, their colleagues for setting up this uh, seminar series for getting us uh, together and uh, communicate the ideas. The work of uh, um, the work I will present today summarizes the um, work of my PhD research under the supervision of Dr. Mitty Um The talk of uh, the title of my talk is uh, "Dynamics of Cellular Flame Deformation and Subsequent DDT Mechanism After the Head-On Interaction with Shock." And now I will uh, turn on my um, pointer. So you can see. Uh, generally speaking, there are two kinds of uh, self-propagating combustion waves: the flagration wave and the detonation wave. Uh, once ignited, once a flame is ignited due to the intrinsic instabilities, it will um, propagate um, from laminar flame, laminar flame to turbulent flame, and uh, under certain circumstances, it will lead to uh, the transition of detonation. The presence of shock flame interaction further accelerate the flame acceleration process. As you can see uh, from the figure here, um, the passage of a shock over a flame deforms the flame interface, um, elongate the surface area, also which leads to the increase of the consumption rate and uh, the further enhancement of the turbulent mixing. Subsequent interaction of uh, the reflected shocks with uh, the flame further deform the flame and uh, increase the local burning rate and uh, the gas temperature to permit uh, detonation. However, the transition of uh, uh, detonation and also the flame acceleration depends on the fuel reactivity, the turbulence intensity, and the boundary layer conditions. Um, so the study of uh, shock flame interaction is important to prevent the DDT in industrial uh, explosions to cause uh, severe damages like uh, what we see in the bounce field accident. It is of, also of uh, importance to um, promote the combustion in supersonic propulsion systems like uh, pulse detonation engine and uh, detonation spray guns. Uh, the rich mirror Machkov instability are generally known to be the main contributor of the uh, source of the flame burning rate increase as it uh, deforms the flame interface when the shock passes over the flame. Um, rich mirror Machkov instability uh, generally deform the flame um, by linear and uh, nonlinear development and then uh, with a further time dependence uh, transition to turbulence. As you can see from this figure here, uh, from uh, A to C, uh, the flame, the, the uh, interface went through a linear evolution stage with the extensive models uh, developed to study the rich mirror instability. It is well known that during the linear evolution stage, it uh, mm, go through a constant uh, growth rate um, controlled by the wave uh, number, the output number, and the, the shock um, by uh, the uh, amplitude, and uh, also the shock, uh, velocity jump caused by the passage of the shock. And in the nonlinear evolution stage, um, it evolves when the 
flame uh, interface when the interface amplitude is uh, about the same order as the wavelength um, then at the late, later times of the evolution it the growth rate decays with uh, an order of uh, one over the time uh, the practical shocks generally um, propagate with the uh, unsteady configurations uh, which with the uh, expansion wave be, uh, propagate uh, with behind the leading shock front the, um, which this leads to the um, which may match, uh, really tailor instability which uh, occurs when a interface um, subject to the really tailor instability can be um, um, built uh, for the early stage for the early stages of the in interface evolution uh, we can build a function using the Bernoulli's equation for a lighter fluid accelerated to the heavy fluid the interface um, along the vo positive vorticity along the interface tend to stabilize the interface however for um, for a heavy fluid acceler being accelerated to the lighter fluid it the vorticity tend to um, deform the flame with an exponential growth both the baroclinic uh, both the richmond mashkov instability and the really taylor instability deforms the uh, interface by the baroclinic vorticity generated from the misalignment of the pressure and uh, density gradient. However, the shock flame interaction involves more than the richmond mashkov instability and the really taylor instability. It also involves other numerous uh, instabilities and time scales such as the chemical reaction and uh, the flame intrinsic instabilities Thus, the um, spontaneous shock flame interaction generally also always lead to the highly convoluted evolutions. The previous study uh, on the shock flame interaction generally uh, um, form a shock that uh, out of the system and to uh, interact with the flame to get rid of the spontaneously uh, formed convoluted structure. However, they treated either the strained flames uh, constrained by the tube geometry for practical considerations or a flame kernel involves two consecutive interactions. Um, in practice, um, the cellular flame are um, generally the most, uh, of, uh, most often uh, occurred um, Flames also it's a um, it is uh, easier for the study of richmond mashkov instability and uh, the stabilizing uh, really Taylor instability. We thus um, formul uh, formulate our um, work by um, the study of shocks and uh, the cellular flames interactions. Here I I will divide my talk into three parts. So. For the first part, I will talk about the cellular flame and a cylindrical shock wave interaction and the nonlinear evolution of the cellular flame from the combined action of richmond mashkov instability and the stabilizing really Taylor instability. Uh, in the second part, I will talk about the, the dynamics of a cellular flame deformation after a high on interaction with a shock wave from unburned gas to burned gas. And in the last part, I will talk about the DDT mechanism from shock flame interactions in thin channels following the interaction from unburned gas to burned gas. Um, now let's go to the first part. In this part, uh, most of the work uh, were conducted with uh, Mr. Maximum Laflash, who was a master student in our lab. Um, in this part, the experiments were conducted uh, in a vertically oriented uh, Healy shell cell, which uh, allowed for a quasi two dimensional uh, evolution of the phenomenon. Um, in the experiments, we first uh, uh, ignite the 
hydrogen air flame, which initially at the atmospheric, atmospheric pressure uh, by, a thick, by a weak spark using a pair of electrodes. And then when the flame has propagated to have uh, in uh, the cellular structure, a shock is then initiated by a, either a high voltage igniter or decoupled by the decoupling of a detonation wave from the from a small detonation tube that is normal to the um, Haley shell cell. Now let me put my laser pointer. Uh, the figures at the bottom shows the uh, configuration of the detonation tube uh, structure and uh, the figure at the top shows the shock the shock in, in ignited by the high voltage igniter so the shock in the in the Haley shell cell that's propagate with a decaying profile um, the configuration of the um, Haley shell cell and uh, everything can be found in the master thesis of uh, Mr. Laflesh mm. Before conducting the experiment of uh, shock flame interactions, we first uh, did a series of uh, uh, experiments to quantify the incident shock and the flame. The figure at the left shows the cylindrical shock decay in air as a function of distance in the Haley shell cell. You can see um, the shock, um, both the shock from the detonation tube and the HVI decays exponentially, which um, uh, it which uh, um, it rather a detonation uh, a blast wave um, propagation. Um, in order to quantify the um, shock strength, a model of uh, energy release from hot uh, from hot gas uh, to the air was used to uh, conduct a series of uh, one-dimensional reconstruction of uh, um, the experiments to fit the energy release. Here we can see that the the shock from the Haley uh, from the HVI is a uh, with the energy of about 10 joule and uh, the from the detonation tube is about uh, 5 joule. The this will be used in the further analysis. The figure on the right shows the evolution of the hydrogen air flame at uh, um, ambient uh, pre uh, pressure and temperature. Um, with the equivalence ratio of uh, 1.0, 0 0.6, and uh, 0 0.3. Um, you can see from this figure, once ignited, um, the flame is initially um, cylindrical and uh, smooth propagating. As it uh, as they propagating uh, outwards, they gradually form the uh, cellular structure. With uh, the decrease of uh, equivalence, equivalence ratio, we can see more a uh, wrinkled flame front and uh, the um, larger uh, flame cusps. Um, this video shows the, sorry. This video shows the interaction of uh, a stoichiometric hydrogen air flame and uh, the interaction with uh, HVI initiated shock. Initially, the flame propagated nearly cylindrically um, in the Haley shell cell. And then when it propagated to form the cellular structure, we then initiate the shock at the center um, to interact uh, head on with the flame. We can see clearly from this, in this video, the def mm, deformation of the flame. Now let me show the um, evolution of the flame with more details. Here in the, this figure shows the detailed image of the flame interface from the video I showed earlier. You can see um, the amplitude which marked by the eta here in the, in the right um, rectangle. Um, after the passage of the incident shock, the flame uh, amplitude uh, gradually increase. Um, and then in the second row, we can see clearly the, inter um, the interface of the flame um, are flattened and then reversed. And finally, with more yeah. corrugated structures. 
Um, this video shows uh, another in, uh, experiment from the interaction of the hydrogen air flame at, uh, with an equi equivalence ratio of uh, 0 0.3 um, and uh, the, the small detonation tube initiating the shock. Similar to the previous I showed earlier, uh, after the passage of the shock, we can also see the um, deformation of the flame interface. Oh, sorry. I think there's a problem with my video. But here, as you can see, the passage of the shock and uh, um, deforms the flame. But here, this is not uh, solely uh, by the incident shock, it also by some other shocks formed by the reflected shock from the first interaction. Here shows the detailed um, evolution of the flame interface. Uh, similar to previously, um, this uh, the, inter the amplitude of the interface gradually uh, increase in the first row and in the second row we can see the Flame, uh, flame interface gradually flattened. Um, um, here in the experiment, we only monitor the uh, experiment with, uh, within the flame time scale. So um, in order to um, get the underlying mechanism of the flame interface evolution, we wish to reconstruct a two-dimensional problem numerically to, uh, um, to find out the controlling mechanism. As the uh, time scale in the experiment is within the reaction time scale with us uh, initiate the problem using an inert interface mimicking the um, flames, uh, flame front um, with the same density ratio and the shape of the single mode flame cusp of the characteristic cup. Uh, for the blast wave, we use a top hat pressure um, to um, mimic the energy release in the experiment. We, with it, we then solve the problem, we then solve the two dimensional Euler equation um, by using a second other uh, accurate Godinov type solver developed by Sam Bell from University of Leeds. Um, this figure shows the evolution of the amplitude um, from the experiments and the numerical simulations. We can see uh, clearly from this figure the evolution of the, uh, for the two cases, uh, agrees uh, relatively well. Um, to understand the um, underlying mechanism, here we also plot the um, um, inter, uh, interface growth due to the uh, solely richmond mashkov instability, the really taylor instability, and uh, a linear combination of the two mechanisms. We can see uh, the initial am cell amplitude growth is mainly controlled by the richmond mashkov instability before it reaches the maximum value. Um, as the transmitted shock wave propagated further from the interface, the really Taylor instability became important to contribute to a decay of the amplitude growth rate. However, um, the directly combined the richmond meshkov instability and the really Taylor instability is not sufficient to predict the amplitude decrease at later times. This is uh, similar for the other cases. So, um, in order to uh, find out uh, the controlling mechanism of the later reversal of the interface, we thus uh, formulated a series of two-dimensional simulation um, to, uh, by separating the regime meshkov instability, the stabilizing really Taylor instability, and uh, by fitting a blast wave with a leading shock of the from the with the same Mach number as in the experiment and the, the decaying and the decaying profile. Um, here, the decaying profile of the faded blast wave um, 
what was using the a constant pressure and the velocity um, gradient derived by uh, Dr. Radulescu for blast wave evolution. Um, and the, at the back of the, fit, the blast wave, the density was uh, keep, kept constant uh, to be the post-shock um, density. And for uh, one thing to know, uh, to mention is that um, for the stabilizing relativity instability case, the density uh, across the interface were used um, the post-shock density. So uh, the interaction for all three uh, all three case, cases with the density interface mimicking the kinetics of the flame in the experiment that's uh, formulated here. This vi the video shows uh, the evolution of the interface for the all three cases. Um, you can see here um, in the initially the initial evolution of the fitted blast wave case is in good agreement with the, the Richmir Mashkov case. However, the late um, unlike the um, nonlinear evolution at the later stages of the Richmir Mashkov instability, um, for the fitted blast wave case, the expansion wave uh, started to, to play a role at later times and uh, to um, reverse the interface. This figure shows the time evolution of the amplitude of the sinusoidal cell subject to the all three cases. Here we can see clearly the initial uh, evolution of the interface of the fitted blast wave case is uh, solely controlled by the richmond mashkov instability. It's also uh, in good agreement with the linear richmond mashkov model. Mm. However, in the nonlinear richmond mashkov instability uh, evolution stage, the growth rate, uh, the growth of the interface uh, gradually decay um, with, with, a, um, it, with a rate um, smaller than the really Taylor instability. Um, the pro, um, the under, um, this is uh, sufficiently to say that um, by, uh, by linearly combining the Richmond Mashkov instability and uh, really Taylor instability is not enough um, to predict the evolution of the interface um, subject to the, the blast wave. Um, the, the underlying mechanism is a uh, still um, ongo uh, the funding the underlying mechanism is uh, still ongoing work um, for us. So um, to conclude for this part, uh, we have investigated the interaction of a blast wave with the cellular flame with the in the flame time scale and found that the flame task amplitude increase and then decrease even to reverse and develop finer scales. Mm, the numerical uh, reconstruction of the problem has shown that the richmond mashkov acts in the first place at the early times and tend to elongate the flame casts. And in the nonlinear richmond mashkov instability time scale, the stabilizing really tailor instability uh, caused by the expansion wave associated with the time varying decaying profile of the shock wave start to play significant role. This will lead to the possible reverse of the cellular front. Um, now let's go to the second part. So in the second part, we conduct uh, the experiment in a uh, rectangular shock tube with uh, the width of uh, 19 millimeters. Um, in the experiments, we initialize uh, the stoichiometric hydrogen air flame with uh, an initial pressure of 10 to 20 kilopascals by, uh, by a hot wear. And then when the flame has the propagate to form a quasi steady uh, cellular structure, we form the uh, incident shock by the decoupling of a detonation wave using a diaphragm. 
the incoming shock Mach number is uh, uh, with uh, in the range of 1.5 to uh, 2.0. Um, this video shows the uh, stoichiometric hydrogen air flame, which at uh, initially 17.2 kilopascals to interact with a uh, shock with the uh, incident Mach number of uh, uh, 1.9. From this video, we can see that um, after the passage of the the passage of the incident shock flattened the flame interface and uh, pushed the flame backwards to the unburned gas. And then, as the flame propagates, uh, it uh, further um, increased the flame uh, flame area, also the amplitude of the interface. And we can uh, we can also see from uh, here that as the flame propagate, it also uh, we can also see the closing up of the flame funnel, which uh, uh, signifies the um, transverse burning of the uh, flame in of the, of the interface toward the funnel inside the uh, toward the fresh gas inside the funnel. Um, to quantify the um, enhancement of the shock uh, on the flame, we uh, further analyze the problem by uh, um, plotting the amplitude, amplitude evolution here. Uh, here, uh, we first uh, divide the amplitude, uh, the flame front into uh, eight uh, cells. For each cell, we assume they are one fourth of a sine wave. From the amplitude evolution here, we can see that um, following the passage of the incident shock, the amplitude of the flame front grow uh, nearly linearly, um, and all the cell all the cell amplitude um, evolves with a, a near uh, with nearly a good agreement with each other. Uh, due to the uh, limit of the shock tube uh, um, dimension and the Schlieren image um, and the Schlieren uh, image um, size, um, we we are not able to see the further uh, flame deformation. So we thus wish to address the problem in a numerical uh, in a uh, numericals to find out the flame evolution at later times. So we um, start the new problem by um, solving a steady one-dimensional flame structure uh, using the shooting method uh, to um, reconstruct the hydrogen air flame uh, at the experimental conditions. And then uh, we Put the one-dimensional. Uh, we put the one-dimensional flame in a um, rectangular, two-dimensional uh, rectangular channel that mimics the um, top half, uh, the top mi um, top middle of the cell. Um, in a, and then we solve the problem, the two-dimensional problem by. Uh, uh, using reactive Navier-Stokes equations and the irreversible Arrhenius uh, Reed law. Uh, to start the pro uh, to start the the problem to initialize the cellular flame, we in, we start by um, perturb the initially one-dimensional laminar flame with a small perturbation, and then let the flame to evolve freely to form the cellular flame structure. Um, the two figures here shows the um, time evolution of the um, maximum heat release contour, which is the, the left figure, and uh, the flame shape amplitude and the burning velocity um, uh, along the um, during the formation of the cellular flame. We can see that um, the flame. Um, the flame shape amplitude and the burning velocity increase exponentially at uh, until approximately 35 uh, characteristic time. 
after that after uh, after that time the flame become steady with a, a nearly constant ve velocity of a uh, 1.3 uh, laminar flame speed and uh, also a nearly constant um, amplitude here we also compare our a cellular flame from the simulation with the top uh, top middle cell we use. Quite surprisingly, though the flame the cellular flame is initiated with a perturbed um, structure. It uh, eventually forms a structure quite similar to the one at the from the experiment with the minor um, differences at the corner. So when the, we then initialize the problem uh, by forming a shock with a, a Mach number of 1.9 at, uh, uh, at a 50 flame length from the uh, flame. In order to um, monitor the flame evolution at later times, um, the red boundary to the um, flame is uh, varying from 500 character basic um, flame length to 2000 characteristic flame length. Now let's see the, uh, have a look at the interaction of the Mach uh, 1.9 shock flame interaction. So um, following the interaction, interaction of, following the passage of the uh, incident shock, we can see that the uh, flame is a, uh, reversed backward to the amber gas. This, this is similar to the experiment. Now let's see it uh, with the more details. As the flame propagates um, further to the, oh, sorry. As the flame propagates further to the uh, burnt gas, it uh, gradually form a very elongated structure with a long neck. And then as the flame propagates, the, it gradually burn out the fresh gas uh, inside the neck and forms a new cellular structure. The new cellular structure thus um, continuously um, propagates. In order to uh, find out the um, controlling mechanism we, um, and also the influence of the richmond meshkov instability, we um, artificially um, turn off the um, reaction uh, upon the interaction of the shock with the interface. This video shows the um, evolution of, uh, of the interaction of the shock with the inert interface. We can see from this fig uh, figure that the flame ju the, just uh, evolves with the classic rich Meshkov instability structure. However, we can, uh, by comparing these uh, two videos, we can see that the initial um, evolution of the two cases are quite um, similar to each other. Although at later times, they gradually diverge. So um, in order to quantify the amplification of the shock to the flame, we here we plot the amplitude evolution for the reactive case and the inert case here in the figure in the right shows the zoomed image zoomed in image of the of the left figure uh, at default 0 0.2 um, laminar flame time here we can see clearly the evolution of the flame interface after the interaction with the incident shock follows four um, distinct stages the first sta stage is the uh, inert evolution stage which uh, we can see clearly the um, before 0 0.12 um, the evolution of the flame interface is nearly is identical to the inert case and then um, the second stage is the um, volumetric expansion of the re chemical reaction uh, caused um, the reactive um, Meshkov evolution stage. 
we can see clearly the um, amplitude of the reactive case gradually uh, diverge from the inert case and uh, propagate with a higher amplitude. And then um, at a time approximately one lam laminar flame time, the, we can see the um, um, fl flame collapse stage, which uh, which is the transverse burnout of the flame at the inside the flame um, inside the flame funnel, and at later times the uh, fl and the flame interface gradually decay to a value that is uh, close to um, the initial amplitude. We call this the new cellular flame formation stage. Mm. Here, uh, from this amplitude uh, evolution um, plot, we can also see that the, in, the evolution of the numerical simulation um, agrees uh, very well with the experiment. That this means that um, the, the uh, observation the whole observation of the flame evolution are in this um, inert evolution stage in the experiment. Here we also plot the burning velocity um, evolution following the interaction with uh, the uh, incident shock. Um, here this, uh, we, this uh, following this um, passage of the incident shock, the flame burning velocity was boosted to be about um, two times the initial value, then increase um, gradually um, in the inert stage and also in the um, reactive richmond mashkov stage. Um, it uh, um, reached the maximum value when the flame starts, uh, when the, flame, uh, the mushroom cap of the flame start to um, separate from the main spike. And uh, finally, the burning velocity also assembled to a value uh, close to the uh, initial uh, value before the interaction. The maximum um, burning velocity increase due to the single uh, shock flame interaction is, uh, for this case, is about 8.5 times the laminar flame time. Uh, the laminar flame uh, speed. Here we also um, plot the evolution of uh, amplitude and uh, the burning velocity uh, for the case with varying shock mark numbers. From this, um, these figures, we can see that uh, firstly, the growth of the amplitude uh, uh, increased weakly with the strength of the incident shock mark number. This, pos uh, this is possibly uh, means that the evolution of the interface is not solely controlled by the um, inert richmond mashkov instability. Also, um, the maximum burning rate increase is uh, in the order of uh, 10 times uh, the laminar flame time. Um, one thing to, note, to notice from this figure is that um, at a later time, um, Except for the case of the Mach number equals to 2.5, all the other cases are sampled to uh, a value. Well, for the for for the case of the Mach equals to 2.5, um, both the amplitude and the um, um, burning velocity um, increase. Um, this um, as non steadiness of the of the case uh, of what Mach equals to 2.5 is attributed to the typical chaotic dynamics of the cellular flame. Since for a stronger shock, the higher compression of the gas ahead of the flame lead to the thin, uh, thinner flame. This allows them to evolve in an essentially larger um, channel. Um, we can see clearly from the previous figures that um, the interface evolves with the four distinct stages. Now I will um, talk about the, the different stages with the more detail.
here in these two figures of the amplitude evolution with um, with time, we also plot uh, the um, linear model from um, Mayer and the Blewett, and also the nonlinear model of the Michali uh, from Michali and that joins the linear and nonlinear uh, regimes um, of the uh, inert richmond Mashkov instability. Um, we know that uh, for um, for an interface subject to the inert interface, uh, inert richmond Mashkov instability, initially when the um, amplitude is uh, uh, much smaller than the wavelength, it uh, um, grows linearly. And uh, when the um, amplitude is uh, large enough uh, to be comparable to the wavelength, it uh, goes to the nonlinear stages. So from um, by putting the uh, two models in the figure, we can see that um, the, ini the initial uh, linear stage uh, evolution uh, before 0 0.1 um, flame time is uh, in good agreement with the model prediction. Mm, well, the linear model of this, um, of the MB um, model works um, well uh, and uh, in good agreement with the experiment and the numerical uh, simulation result. Um, in the figure left, we also uh, plot, uh, compared the inert simulation result with the Michaelia model. Here from this uh, um, dot dashed line, and this dot dashed line is the, the prediction from the Michaelia model. And this um, black uh, black curve is the from the sim inert simulation. We can see that the Michaelia model can uh, quite um, uh, can can predict the evolution of the inert interface quite well. And uh, in as the flame propagate uh, as the flame propagate the gas. Uh, uh, the interface of the flame and elongates. The gas possessed by the flame expands and uh, occupies a non-negligible volume, volume affecting the motion of the flame shape as uh, shown in this numerical result here. When the um, amplitude of the flame is uh, much larger than the channel head, the flame surface area in the two-dimensional is uh, proportional to the amplitude. So we thus uh, formulate a um, model for the um, flame proper uh, for the flame um, evolution in in a channel with the for the flame with the planar area. And we know from the um, mass conservation law that the increase of the burning burnt gas due to the volumetric expansion is uh, equal to the consumption rate of the um, fresh gas we then can formulate this equation and uh, to uh, sub to um, account for the um, supplementary volumetric expansion of the material across the flame as a linear correction to the inert nonlinear growth rate model by combine uh, by linearly combining the um, Michaelian model with uh, this um, flame evolution model. Um, here also we can see from this flame model that uh, when the flame is a uh, uh, not influenced by the richmond meshkov instability, the growth of the interface is a, a function, is an exponential function. Here shows uh, the amplitude and the gro growth rate evolution for the case of uh, incident Mach number equals to 1.9. We can see clearly from um, these two figures the proposed model can well predict the evolution of the interface. 
also um, the inert evolution stage stages uh, the inert um, the inert uh, um, part of the Richmond Mashkov instability um, tend to control the interface evolution at early times. And then at, as the flame propagates further uh, to the flame, then the chemical reaction caused the volumetric expansion gradually to control. Um, here we also show uh, here from the um, result from the other uh, from other um, incident shock mark numbers can also see we can also see the same tendency. Well in the um, flame funnel collapse stage the transverse burnout of the flame occurs, uh, we can see from this figure, occurs on a time scale associated with the um, this, uh, flame displacement velocity and the transverse uh, length scale of the cellular flame. Uh, with the post interaction ratio uh, of uh, the density uh, of the fresh gas density and the, the burn gas density within the range of six to eight in the simulation and uh, and the non-dimensionalized channel height known we can thus evaluate uh, the burnout time of the uh, flame of the flame funnel which is about uh, 1.39 uh, to 1.85 uh, laminar flame time which is, we can see from this figure it the Mm, prediction is in good agreement with the experiment with the simulation result. Um, for pra practical considerations, it is of important. It is of interest to quantify the burning rate enhancement of the flame due to the interaction with the shock uh, with the shock waves and elucidate the controlling mechanism to uh, for a good uh, approximation. The increase of the burning rate of the flame is given by the increase in its surface area. As mentioned earlier, when the mm, flame amplitude is much larger than the channel head, the flame surface area in two-dimensional um, channel is proportional to the um, flame amplitude. So we can thus expect the characteristic rate of the burning rate increase to be well approximate by the characteristic rate of the flame shift amplitude increase. From, from this uh, figure, we can see that the two rates are indeed in well, good, well, very good agreement over the time of interest, even for conditions uh, when the amplitude is not mm, much larger than the channel head. So to conclude for part two, um, for following the passage of the incident shock, the flame casts was, uh, were flattened and reversed back to the burnt gas. Following the passage, the reversed flame uh, generally go through four distinct stages. Uh, the inert evolution stage due to the richmond mashkov instability at times uh, can significantly less than the laminar flame time. And then the non-linear increment result from the amplification of the chemical energy release on growth rate of uh, inert Richmond Mashkov instability. And uh, then the transverse burnout of the, of the Nike of the flame funnel. And finally, the readjustment to a new cellular flame on the laminar flame time scale. The growth rate, of, the growth of the amplitude increase is uh, uh, weakly influenced by the strength of the incident Mach number. The whole elongation of the flame front sub subject to single um, uh, re shock flame interaction is in the order of one flame time. After that, the flame will burn out the fresh gas along the neck. And uh, we proposed a model that provides a simple way to estimate the flame burning rate increase upon the passage of a shock and the, the duration of this event. So now let's go to the third part. Now I will um, play the video as I shown in part two again to show the whole um, interaction process. So 
So after the uh, interaction of the flame shock and the flame in the first time, the flame and uh, the uh, the shock reflected back from the end, from the end wall and uh, um, traversed the flame and form this um, shock flame complex. That's also observed by the um, work in Thomas and his co-workers. Here we can see from this shock flame complex structure um, that the although the um, channel is uh, very thin, we can still see this uh, three-dimensional structure uh, as uh, the bifurcated uh, and the, the bifurcated shock at uh, the top and uh, the bottom wall. The shock, uh, the shock flame complex then um, rapidly formed a detonation wave at here by um, the formation formation of a hotspot. In spite of the low sensitivity fuel air mixture at a low pressure and the weak incident shock used and also the small channel dimension. Um, here shows the um, uh, local speed of the shock flame complex at the, the center of the channel and uh, the center where the detonation initial spot first uh, emerged. We can see from this figure um, the shock flame complex at the two positions propagate uh, um, with a, a similar tendency. And the flame speed uh, is in within the um, time of the measurement. The flame speed is initially uh, very close to the chaplain Drogate deflagration state, then it uh, continuously in accelerate before it forms the um, detonation emission spot and then transform, transform to detonation. The acceleration of uh, the um, shock flame complex can be better seen in this space time diagram of the shock flame complex evolution along the um, along the dashed line here um, on the top of the figure uh, with the 14 pixels wide. Um, so due to the fact that uh, the problem is highly uh, 3D and also as uh, we see previously, um, the vishmir meshkov length scale is much longer than the um, channel width. We then, um, formulate a two-dimensional problem in the direction of the uh, line of the site of the experiment. Um, <coughs> sorry. Uh, to um, examine the underlying mechanism of the DDT. So uh, we solve the problem uh, in two-dimensional by using a reactive Navier-Stokes equation and uh, irreversible Arrhenius rate laws in a rectangular uh, channel. Um, here, for the comp for computational efficiency, we we uh, simulate only half of the channel by using a symmetric axis, um, and uh, the top and the right wall we use adiabatic um, no slip adiabatic wall, and uh, at uh, the left boundary. A free post shock inflow condition was posed to initialize the incident shock. The flame structure is then um, formed at the right boundary, uh, at the right of the channel, um, by imposing a steady one dimensional flame structure um, that reconstructs the kinetic, kinetics of the hydrogen air flame in the experimental conditions with a uh, constant pressure and uh, velocity along the channel. Mm. This, fig uh, this video shows the uh, evolution of the uh, sh a shock with a Mach number of 1.75 and uh, the flame interaction. Here, um, similar to the experiments, we can we can see um, 
the um, the interaction of the finger flame and the shock um, also lead to the um, shock flame compl uh, complex as, uh, to a structure that uh, um, shock uh, shock um, and the, the flame propagate uh, together and also it also lead to the final transition to detonation. So now let's um, see this uh, um, interaction with the mall details. Here in this space time diagram, we can see the um, clear evolution of the problem. Um, we can see before the interaction, the finger flame has acquired um, elongated structure, which is about 11 times the channel head. And then um, the, after the passage of the incident shock, the flame uh, interface get inverted by the neural rich mesh of instability. The shock then reflected back from the right wall and uh, traverse the flame to form this um, very elongated flame structure um, augmented by the kevin ham shear layer um, instability along the flame front. The passage of the flame, uh, or the passage of the shock also lead to a lambda structure that uh, with a, a recirculation zone anchors the flame tip. Um, the flame anchoring the the flame anchoring to the leading shock and uh, um, somewhat uh, augmented by the cannon hammer holes in instability. Um, leads to a very efficient mechanism to strain the flame. For example, at the current time, the flame has acquired a, a, a length that is about 200 um, the characteristic flame um, time. That, um, the rapid amplification of the shock flame complex um, finally lead to the um, strengthen of the leading shock and then the final uh, hotspot emergence and uh, the transition to detonation. Um, this uh, structure, this uh, shock anchoring flame structure also explain why we can see the um, very texturized flame as a, in the experiment. Um, here shows the um, evaluated effective burning velocity evolution of the flame. We can see before the interaction, the flame has acquired a, a, a burning velocity about uh, 12, 12 um, the laminar flame speed, which is um, uh, in good agreement with the finger flame before the uh, finger flame amplitude before the interaction. The interaction of the flame uh, with the first shock and the, the reshock leads to two uh, exponential increase of the flame burning velocity. This um, exponential burning velocity uh, increase um, suggests that the, the flame, flame deformation is not um, solely controlled by the Richmond Meshkov instability, but um, sim it seems to be solely controlled by the flame straining as uh, the flame elongation is uh, in well, uh, um, the flame, the elongation of the flame, flame length is uh, in well agreement with the increase of the burning velocity. Then at about uh, 0 0.65 um, characteristic time, the, the flame reaches the Chapman, deflagra uh, Chapman Jugate deflagration uh, state. And from then, it uh, saturates to a uh, new state with uh, a much smaller growth rate. And uh, um, 
this is uh, finally this is finally um, punctured by the um, uh, rapid rapid runaway when the flame has reached the sound speed when the flame has reached the sound speed uh, a state that is uh, comparable to the sound speed in the amber gas. So um, uh, to uh, have to study the uh, the problem with a globe, global uh, global gas dynamics um, um, manner, we we um, five average the flame the flow field um, across the channel channel width. Here shows the uh, here in this characteristic space time, uh, we show the um, characteristic uh, uh, shows the five average the um, particle path, the C minus characteristics, the leading shock, and the, also the um, flame region. More clearly, we can see from um, this this figure. After the inter after the passage of the reflected shock with uh, uh, over the flame, the flame the flame length continuously increases until uh, 0 0.8 characteristic time. At this stage, we can see um, that the 90 percent iso control of the flame is uh, parallel to the C minus characteristics. This means that the flame has reached the Chapman Drouge state. In this at, at this stage, any increase in burning velocity will lead to the amplification of the forward facing wave. The um, amplification of the forward facing wave can be seen clearly from the convergence of the C minus characteristics and uh, the pro amplified pressure profiles along the bottom of the uh, domain. Um, this uh, rapid acceler uh, acceleration of the flame and the amplification of the um, of the forward-facing pressure waves um, further leads to the amplification of the leading shock, and then at uh, approximately 1.2 characteristic time, uh, we can see that the 10% iso control of the flame is now. Um, parallel to the uh, C minus characteristics. Uh, this means that at this stage, the flame has reached the um, uh, is a, a state that's uh, uh, in phase with the pressure wave. And this will lead to the most rapid amplification of the forward facing pressure wave and uh, the leading shock. And uh, this fi finally lead to the transition to detonation. Here we also um, show the auto-ignition time in this um, characteristic uh, space-time plot. Here, uh, here in this figure, the uh, vertical distance from the black and the red cross indicates the auto-ignition time for the chosen, chosen particle. Quite surprisingly, we can see that the auto ignition plays um, little roles. Only at the end of this amplification process, um, it is uh, it is in the uh, all, it is uh, in the same order as the um, particle residence time. Um, here shows the final um, DDT process. Um, as we can see from this figure, the strengthening of the forward facing, uh, the strengthening of the leading shock front is not continuous. It uh, involves the uh, f forward facing pressure waves that formed by the flame in the early at the earlier times. We can see here. As the forward-facing pressure, um, pressure wave propagates to reach the leading front, it has formed a contact surface that uh, propagates backwards to the burnt uh, to the uh, right side, and uh, then um, it 
a hot spot is then formed at uh, the intersection of the contact surface and uh, the um, bottom boundary, bottom boundary where it where it has the highest temperature. Mm. The interaction of the first forward facing wave and uh, the um, leading front will will form a region with uh, higher temperatures. The high um, this will uh, this allow for the formation of a uh, more hot spots and uh, the finally the finally transition to detonation. Here we also uh, we also conduct a simulation for um, shocks interaction with uh, uh, flames uh, with uh, no boundary layer effects and uh, weaker shocks to interact with the finger flame with boundary layer effect. For the case uh, with the weaker okay. shocks, we can see um, from the black curve here, um, the uh, burning velocity increased um, due to the weaker shock uh, flame interaction is uh, uh, smaller than the case with the uh, higher um, uh, strength, uh, higher shock strength. Also, we also the passage uh, of the reflected shock over the flame uh, with the weaker shocks fail to anchor the flame and uh, strain the flame. This leads to the um, smaller um, um, flame burning burning velocity. In this um, critical case, we can see that the flame uh, still reaches the uh, chapman jugge deflagration state. However, due to the fact that the flame fails to anchor to the leading shock, it uh, fails to accelerate to um, be in phase with the sound, uh, to be with the sound speed and finally transition to detonation. Um, this highlight, um, this um, highlight the mechanism of the shock, flame, shock and finger flame interaction with boundary layers uh, is the straining of the flame due to the bifurcation, the bifurcated shock um, anchoring mechanism, and also uh, um, relatively larger, large um, flame burning velocity is acquired to be in phase with the compressible effect. Here from this um, interaction of the same of the shock with the same incident Mach number with no boundary layer effect uh, simulation, we can see that the evolution of the interface is uh, of the process is uh, an order of magnitude smaller than the case with boundary layer effect throughout the whole process. This again highlights the fact that the mechanism for DDT is um, the straining of the flame due to the shock anchoring flame mechanism. So to conclude for part three, um, the shock and the flame interaction in a thin channel provides a very efficient mechanism for DDT by permitting a highly strained flame by, anchor, by the anchoring mechanism, which leads to an exponential increase of uh, burning velocity. The very large burning velocity brings the flame in the compressible regime to be in phase with the pressure wave. The DDT process occurs on time scale comparable to single laminar flame time. And the auto ignition responsible for DDT at uh, the end of the process when the leading shock is uh, strong, um, strong enough. And finally, I would like uh, to um, acknowledge the endless support from uh, um, Professor Mati Radulescu and also uh, the support from Professor Gang Li. Uh, the experiments were performed at uh, the Nation and the Reactive Gas Dynamic Dynamics Laboratory in University of Ottawa. And uh, finally, I would like to acknowledge the financial support and uh, the computer, um, computational support. Um, with that, I would like to um, conclude my talk and uh, I'm happy to discuss uh, with uh, Dr.
the questions and the, the comments. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, uh, Hong Xia. Uh, are there any questions for the from the audience? Um, while maybe you type your questions in or try to uh, unmute yourselves. Um, I have a couple questions, Hong Xia. I was wondering uh, what the driving parameters be behind the flame flipping or stabilization are and uh, how they're linked to the uh, DDT or no DDT process. So that's stretching and uh, flame acceleration. So, um, the first so question the first part you are, is, yeah. okay. Yeah, how, what are the parameters that uh, guide the flame flipping speed um, and amplitude? Okay, you mean the, in the first part, the, for the shock, uh, blast wave and stellar flame interaction? That's right. Okay. So, um, we believe that the, um, reverse of the of the flame uh, interface is uh, caused by the stabilizing really tailor instability as you can see from um, this um, these figures the it's uh, somehow with uh, the same tendency as the, the as with the prediction from the really tailor really tailor instability and uh, although with the uh, different um, frequencies, we, um, we think that um, it's possibly, this is uh, um, not the, the evolution is not, uh, as, a, as a, now we just uh, linearly combine the richmond Mashkov instability and the really tailor instability, but probably it's not sufficient to, um, to um, predict the amplitude in, um, decrease. This is uh, uh, one of our ongoing works also. Right, so, so like part of the amplitude decrease was from uh, the burning of those spikes, right? Um, do, and when you increase the Mach number of the shock interaction, uh, that speeds up the, the burning of those spikes, is that right? Actually, no. Because we study the problem within the um, laminar flame time, so there is uh, no time for the burning of the um, fresh gas. So I think we think uh, okay, I think I this is um, yeah. And your second uh, second question is uh, related to the last part. Uh, yeah, that's right. I mean, I'm I'm a big fan of that. Uh, characteristics diagram that you have on the slide right below it. Thanks. So yeah, what uh, I, I was wondering if you could go over again, the difference of uh, what leads to DDT and what doesn't lead to a DDT. Oh, okay. Maybe um, I will show this uh, again. So um, we believe that um, the shock, um, the flame that anchors to the flame, um, continue can um, the the shock anchoring mecha mechanism continuously strain the flame to um, make the flame can flame inter uh, flame uh, interface continuously increase. Um, and this uh, straining of the flame uh, is the reason the, why the DDT finally occurs. Well, for the case with no DDT to occur, you can see from this uh, temperature profile, the flame depart, um, departs from the leading shock structure. Okay, so as long as the shock is strong enough to take that flame along, that'll lead to DDT. Yes, from, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any other comments or questions from the audience?
Yeah, just to see a Professor Higgins says that he agrees uh, with Shen, like this uh, visualization of the uh, characteristic diagram is very wonderful. And, uh, uh, and also I have a, a comment or maybe just my uh, uh, guess on this, like the, the, the mechanism for DDT in this case, is it okay. if there is enough area for, you know, flame front area to interact with the shock, then this will lead to DDT, right? Like, like uh, I believe these are like from those, uh, the, the, the previous cases you show, there is no DDT, you just have a reverse flame. Like the key difference is uh, uh, for those, uh, for, for the part, uh, for what you presented in part two is uh, um, the deformation of the flame is uh, small, right? Like this amplitude is relatively small. But in this yeah, yeah. Uh, part three, you have this uh, elongated or, or highly strained flame. So you have like a very long flame front area where the um, uh, reactive wave area to interact with the uh, the shock wave. So this will give you um, um, like more uh, room to, to develop these instabilities and so on. You have this uh, local uh, uh, explosion or this anchored flame. I think that's... I don't know, yeah. like if you have um, maybe like a less elongate. I, I don't know, like uh, if uh, experimentally this is something, uh, um, this is something easy to realize. Uh, do you think it's possible to have like a less elongated wave, but a smaller uh, wavelength in the um, in the uh, y direction? So uh, so you have like a you know larger. Uh, larger flame front area uh, per uh, volume, but this is less elongated. And would that give the same, um, um, would that also trigger a DDT in the same way? Or you have to have a, uh, like a very elongated uh, flame front in the X direction to give a rise to DDT? Um. Actually, for our case, uh, we are we studied um, the me the mechanism of the uh, DDT is uh, similar to that of the finger flame uh, acceleration. Mm. So, uh, in the finger flame acceleration, um, from the work of uh, Klanet uh, and Serbi, they found that um, the flame in the with within a uh, small in smaller channels. The flame tend to um, form a very um, larger uh, to form larger flame surface areas, and also the flame tip position is a a, a function of a, a is an exponential function of the channel width. So um, with the, so uh, with the, that uh, theory, I believe with the Mm, for for the case that you mentioned with a uh, wider channel uh, channel um, width, this might won't mm -hmm. uh, lead to uh, a fast enough acceleration of the flame. Right, right, right. Yeah, I think like uh, what I say is uh, is actually the other way. It's like if you have an even smaller, uh, or like if you see this as a uh, wavy fa flame front. Uh, you don't have only one um, wave or one um, sinusoidal wave front, but the, you have a number of them. But the wavelength is the smaller, so the uh, so the overall uh, flame area could be larger, right? I, I think that's I don't know, like if that's somehow equivalent to have like a smaller uh, channel width, and that also give you a larger flame area. Um, I guess it yeah. might possible if we have a strong enough leading shock. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your answer. Thank, thanks. Yeah. Unless there's another question from the audience, I have another question. Um, okay. in, in the detonations, I think you're, you've seen some of my work. Uh, we see that lowering the ratio of specific heats leads to a lot of this mixing behind uh, behind the detonation. Um, I was wondering if you 
did all these uh, simulations and experiments for hydrogen, oxygen only, or if you looked at different, uh, different isotropic exponents? Um, actually, in, in this part, uh, in this work, we only um, examine the hydrogen air flame with the, so we didn't uh, um, study the influence of the spe uh, specific heat ratio. But okay, I, I guess, guess it's a, a bit, of interest. Yeah, a bit linked to Zhao Cheng's comment, like if it does cause more mixing in the back, uh, you think that that'll lead to DDT um, more often or at uh, lower limits? Um, I guess, uh, I think um, this is uh, possible uh, if, if we have, a, I think it's a, also depend on the strength of the leading the, of the leading shock if we only have a, a flame on front with uh, uh, as uh, Xiaoxiong mentioned I guess um, it's um, it's possibly yes. it's uh, harder because it has to um, propagate with a uh, large enough um, speed to to form the Com mm, the convoluted uh, shock flame complex first if we, if we don't have a lead, strong enough leading shock. Okay, so leading shock seems to be pretty important. Uh, thanks a lot. I, are there any other thanks. questions or comments from the audience? I have a comment. Yeah, Mate. So I think the point is that there's, there's not much mixing and what she's uh, shown is that you can have a, a tremendous elongation of the of the of the flame surface area without involving any any sort of turbulence or turbulent mixing. So we clearly haven't done the the tests for 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 different channel width, different gases, different gammas. Uh, 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 if if somebody gives me the money, I'll I'll I'll, I'll, I'll do thousands of them. But uh, uh, I think the point is that that uh, uh, we can have a. a a very, very, very powerful mechanism for, for DDT from, from straining of the surface area of this, of this flame. So if I could speculate, then you could, you could expect that if you have a gas that has a lower gamma, then that, uh, that flame anchoring would be much more more efficient. Uh, so uh, thin channel, fast burning velocity, low gamma, all uh, all, all lead to a uh, higher propensity of DDD. That's it. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, I think, uh, I think you're right. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else wants to chime in. Okay, uh, if there's nothing else, um, I'd like to thank you again, Hong Xia. Uh, for your talk. Thank you. And also like to thank uh, all the other speakers from from this season's um, presentations that we've had. This was the seventh one uh, for this season. Uh, well, I'll be sending you certificates to thank you for your presentation. But uh, until that happens, uh, I, I'm, I'm thanking you. Um, for those of you who uh, might have missed the presentations from uh, from the other speakers this season, they're all available online. I'll post the link in the chat right now. So you can go to this YouTube channel um, and we've posted all the presentations there. Um, next season schedule will be starting in January. We're gonna have about one presentation uh, a week. Um, if you'd like to, to stay, I mean, you can stay tuned to the emails and if you're not receiving the emails, just please contact Zhao Cheng or myself and we'll add you to the mailing list. Um, and I hope uh, you all enjoy the upcoming holidays for those of you ce who celebrate them. I wish you a happy new year and, and we'll see you in, in about a month. Thank you very much.